When we are using platinum and palladium catalyst, we can do it at room temperature. Carboxylic acids means it contains R along with COOH group. Learning this equation is very 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 important because it is asked in the previous exams. Methane when it is treated with chlorine in the presence of sunlight. Hello my dear students, welcome back to second session on the chapter hydrocarbons. Last class we studied about the classification of hydrocarbons and then we learnt about the preparation of alkanes and also we learnt about the nomenclature of alkanes. There are some more methods of preparation which is left out which we will be learning today. Okay. First method is from unsaturated hydrocarbons. So what we are doing? Unsaturated hydrocarbons are alkenes and alkynes. For these we can add hydrogen to get alkane okay so hydrogen gas is added to alkenes and alkynes in the presence of finely divided catalysts like nickel platinum palladium etc okay to give alkenes this process is also called as hydrogenation okay when we are using platinum and palladium catalyst we can do it at room temperature but if you are using nickel catalyst you have to heat it to 250 degree Celsius. Okay. So example, for example, you have R CH double bond CH2 that is a carbon carbon double bond is there for that hydrogen should add double. Hydrogen should get added up. Now what happens is when there is a double bond out of this one bond you want to break. If you want to break a bond then to both the carbon atoms which is involved in double bond you need to add something here and something here so that one bond is broken. So here you are adding hydrogen so you get R CH2 single bond CH2. Always remember if you have a carbon carbon double bond for example you want to break this bond so you need to add something here you need to add something here it can be any atom what you are adding but to break a bond you need to add something to form a bond you need to remove something okay example R group we have taken propene that is CH3 group we have taken CH3 CH double bond CH2 hydrogen in the presence of nickel at 250 degree Celsius here one hydrogen will get added up here one it gets added up to give propane okay similarly propyne if we are taking okay for that two molecules of hydrogen I require. Why? Because one bond to break, here one hydrogen, here one I added. To break one more bond, I will add one more hydrogen, one more hydrogen. So that I will get propane. So two molecules of hydrogen will be required if you are taking alkynes. Okay. So this is the way we prepare alkanes from alkenes and alkynes. Next is from monocarboxylic acids. Now what is this carboxylic acids? Carboxylic acids means it contains R along with COOH group. If COOH group is there, we call it as carboxylic acids. Okay. Now from monocarboxylic acid means it contains only C one COOH group. Okay. In that first method is by decarboxylation of a fatty acid. So here we are taking sodium salt of carboxylic acid. Now what is the sodium salt of carboxylic acid? Now this is the carboxylic acid group. From this H you have replaced with sodium or potassium. We call it as salt of monocarboxylic acid. Sodium is there, sodium salt of monocarboxylic acid. Potassium is there, then potassium salt of monocarboxylic acid. Or whichever metal is there, we can tell. Okay. You can also tell silver salt of carboxylic acid. Okay. So which metal is there, that name has to come first. So we are taking sodium salt of aliphatic monocarboxylic acid when it is heated with soda lime. Soda lime is mixture of NaOH and CaO. What is it? NaOH and CaO, we get alkanes. See, RCOO Na with NaOH, what it will form? Na2CO3 and R will get bonded with H to give an alkane. Okay. Similarly, 
R we are writing CH3 group. So this is sodium salt of acetic acid we call it as. Here what will happen again with NaOH, Na2CO3 is removed, CH3 plus 1 H we get CH4 that is methane. Okay. Now next is by coal base electrolytic method. Now what is the meaning of electrolysis? You are passing current to any solution. Electric current is passed through a solution. Because you are passing that electric current, if the chemical reaction is happening, we call it as electrolysis. Okay. Electricity you are passing, lysis is happening. Okay. Electrolysis. So, coal based electrolytic method, that is because he is found out it. Okay. What we are doing in that? When an aqueous solution of sodium salt of aliphatic monocarboxylic acid is electrolyzed, alkane is formed at anode. So, what is it? First, we will take CH3CO. Okay. For this, you pass current, it will form CH3CO minus K plus ion. Further, what is it formed? I will write it here again. CH3COOK will give us CH3COO minus and K plus. Okay. Now what we are doing? Here I have this is my anion, this is my cation. So the anion CH3CO minus goes towards anode. This one has one extra electron which it will lose. So it will become a free radical by losing electron. Because its electron, oxygen's electron, which was involved in bonding is as it is. That's why it is a free radical. Now, this free radical, carbon dioxide will lost and it will become CH3 free radical. CH3 with one more CH3 free radical will form alkane. So, at anode, you are getting alkanes. Okay. At cathode, what will happen? Cation, which is there in the solution is not only K+, plus, we have H+, plus of water also. Correct? No. See, when you are taking acetic sodium salt of acetic acid, you take CH3COOK and for this water also is there. So, from this you are getting CH3COO minus ions and K plus ions. Here you are getting H plus ions and OH minus ion. So, H plus ion what is there goes towards the cathode. So, water will give H plus ion. H plus ion will accept an electron become free radical, two hydrogen atoms will become hydrogen gas and hydrogen gas is liberated at cathode. So, here what you get? Hydrogen gas. Here what you get? You get alkene. Correct? So, this is called as coal base electrolysis process. Overall reaction we can write like this. RCOOK with H2O undergoes electrolysis to give alkane, carbon dioxide gas, hydrogen gas and KOH. Now from where did this KOH come ma'am? See here K plus ion, OH minus ion. Together it forms KOH. Okay. So that's about coal base electrolytic process. Learning this equation is very, very, very important because it is asked in the previous exams. Okay. We will go to the next slide in which we have physical properties of alkanes. So, what is the physical properties of alkanes? The lower members are gases, then it becomes a liquid and the higher members with lot of carbon atoms, they are solids. So, which are those? We will see. Alkanes up to 4 carbon atoms, they are gases, that is C1 to C4. Alkane up to C17, up to 17 carbon atoms from C5 onwards, they are liquids and still higher members are solids. Alkanes are insoluble in water, but soluble in what? Organic solvents like benzene and ether. Last is the boiling point of N alkanes that is straight chain alkanes increases with the molecular mass increase. As the molecular mass is increasing, the boiling point will increase. But if there is branching which is coming, then the boiling point will decrease. So, these are the physical properties of alkanes. Next, we have the chemical properties of alkanes. So, what is it? chemical properties of alkanes. Under that first one is halogenation. Important. 
more than this we have the mechanism which is very important okay so what we are doing is halogenation takes place at a high temperature or in the presence of diffused sunlight okay so in the presence of sunlight or at high temperature halogenation takes place now for example we are taking methane methane when it is treated with chlorine in the presence of sunlight one hydrogen atom out of four one hydrogen atom will get substituted with chlorine so you get chloromethane and hcl so what is happening i have plus chlorine and chlorine hydrogen with chlorine will go as hcl and instead of hydrogen we'll have chlorine so you'll get CH3Cl. Next what will happen? You have got CH3Cl. One more hydrogen will get substituted with chlorine. You will get, see here, CH3Cl with chlorine in the presence of sunlight. You will get CH2Cl2. That means one hydrogen is removed as HCl. One more chlorine is added. That is dichloromethane. Further dichloromethane with one more chlorine. One more hydrogen is substituted, you will get trichloromethane or chloroform, we call it as. Got it? So, every step you have each hydrogen getting substituted with what? With chlorine. Okay? So, CHCl3 with chlorine again will form tetrachloromethane or carbon tetrachloride also we call it as. So, every step each hydrogen atom is getting substituted with chlorine during halogenation. Now, we learn the mechanism for the first step. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of mechanism? Mechanism means slowly what happens one after the other we are learning. Okay. So, first is and before I continue, this particular question is a very, very, very important. Several times they have asked for three marks. Three steps carries three marks with the equations. Okay. So, first step is chain initiation. Chlorine molecules absorb energy from sunlight to give chlorine free radical. So, chlorine, what happens? The bond is broken. This chlorine atom gets its electron. This chlorine atom gets its ele uh, electron which was involved in bonding. They have one electron which is free. So, we call it as chlorine free radical. That is the first step. Step two is chain propagation. So, now you have methane and chlorine free radical. So, methane with chlorine free radical in the presence of sunlight. One hydrogen chlorine will take to form HCl and HC, CH3 becomes a free radical. So, what is happening here? You have methane like this. Okay. And you have chlorine free radical. So, this takes up the hydrogen along with its electron to form HCl. So, this carbon atom has its electron to with itself. So, it will be CH3 free radical, alkyl free radical or here it is methyl free radical. Further, the methyl free radical with one more chlorine. Again, there is homolysis taking place. This becomes a free radical. This becomes a free radical. These two combine to form CH3Cl and chlorine free radical is obtained. So, in every step you have new chlorine free radicals which is coming up due to which, you know, there is a constant reaction which is happening. Now, how will this reaction stop? Again, this chlorine will go, one more methane molecule it will attack. Again, chlorine free radical is formed, one more methane molecule. So, this continues, okay. Now, how do we stop the reaction? That is the third step, that is the termination. The free radicals combine with one another to terminate the reaction. That is chlorine and chlorine free radical together they can form chlorine gas Cl2 or methyl and methyl free radical together it can form C2H6 that is alkane or methyl and chlorine free radical can form CH3Cl that is chloromethane. Any of the reactions is possible. So, termination happens when free radical reacts with one another. Okay. So, that is about the mechanism of chlorination of methane. So, what is the first step? Revision. Chlorine with chlorine homolysis will give rise to chlorine free radicals. That is the first step. Second step, methane reacts with chlorine free radical to form methyl free radical and HCl. Methyl 
free radical that is CH3. Again with chlorine gas, it will form CH3Cl and chlorine free radical. Termination, all the free radicals react with one another to form the respective compounds. Okay, so that's about the mechanism of chlorination of methane. Next class, we'll be learning about combustion and controlled oxidation of alkanes. So I hope you have understood today's class. Thank you, my dear children. Stay tuned, stay focused.